Welcome back. We're now going to start configuring the core applications and start securing them. Now you can add your users and your groups beforehand. What we like to do is we like to secure everything and then start deploying all the users and groups afterwards. So we're going to start with the biggest ones. We're going to start with Gmail. We're then going to move down to the Google Calendar and the Google Drive and Docs. So let's get started. So to get to here, remember you went to Home, you then clicked on Apps and G Suite and you got here. If you are going to tick around here, if you tick on this, you can switch on and off. And if you click over here, you can say turn off for everyone. So let's click on Gmail. We'll tell you how many users you've had active in the last seven days. Obviously this is brand new, so there'll be nothing. User settings, how, what name formats you want to get it set up as. Let's start with that. Themes, do you want users to choose their own themes? Most of the clients that we deal with are no, hell no, and definitely not. So whatever you want to do, you can just click on here, choose their own themes. It does take a while to propagate. Do you want email read receipts to be sent via your domain? Email read receipts, I find, are the most arrogant. There's a long discussion about that. I probably could make an entire course about read receipts. But depending on what you want, if you want read receipts to be sent or not, you can say allow read receipts to be sent from all addresses or it can be sent to all addresses. Let's just cancel that. Mail delegation. Can you allow users to delegate their mailboxes to other users in the domain? This is normally quite important if you've got a CEO and a PA and the CEO says, I'm going to allow mine to be delegated to the PA and the PA can go in and check the emails and send emails on behalf of. So that is what that is about. So if you want to allow that, you must take that. Name formats. Are we going to do first name? Are we going to last name? Or are we going to do customize settings? So let's just keep it as first name, last name. Do you want to allow Gmail to work offline? This will only happen in the Chrome browser. So if you allow Gmail to happen offline, most of the clients that we deal with allow Gmail to happen offline. But they also have password policies on their laptops that sort of like after five, ten minutes that the laptops lock themselves and they, people can't get into your stuff. So if you do want to allow that, that's perfect. And then, and then if you want to do this, the forced deletion of offline accounts, if someone signs out of their Gmail account or their Google account, you can say forced deletion. They're not able to choose whether or not it's going to be deleted. This is quite a nice thing, especially for people that are out on the road or use internet cafes or use shared computers. If they allow it to be offline and then they sort of like they log off, it should delete their offline data. It shouldn't have a copy of it sitting around there. So let's leave that. Okay, so let's just push save. Perfect. Confidential mode is quite important. It allows people when they send emails to say, people can't print this email, people can't forward it, they can't copy it, and they can't download attachments or messages or anything like that. Most of the times, leave that enabled because if you disable it, no one can use confidential mode. I quite enjoy Smart Compose personalization. I've included a link to a blog article where they announced it to show exactly how it works. But basically, to look at the way it works, here is a little GIF. Now, if this excites you, it should, because it does save quite a lot of time when you start writing. And also does is quite amusing to see what Google thinks you're actually trying to say. And do you sort of like you mess with Google and go, aha, I'm actually not going to say that. I'm going to sort of like type in no, just to mess with the algorithm. Don't do that. Google does control us. I mean, Google doesn't control us. Anyway, so leave that enabled. And then lastly, dynamic email. So dynamic emails are actually quite amazing and you can disable or re-enable it here. But if you haven't ever dealt with dynamic emails, in Gmail and in G Suite, they have this wonderful thing where someone brings in an email or someone sends you an email and it says a couple of things. It says, do you want to have a meeting on Friday at 10 o'clock? And what Gmail does is it actually puts certain things in it. Like, do you want to make a meeting? Do you want to RSVP to this? 
and quite a few other things. So if you go over here, and I'll put this link in the resources, you will see a little bit about what it means. So there's a little GIF here about what it actually looks like. But it all works differently. So there's RSP to events, fill out questionnaires, browse catalogs. I've never seen that one, to be honest and respond to comments and you can switch them on and off i don't know why you would want to switch them off they really are quite handy and they do help your users quite a lot so whether or not you want to keep that on is perfect those are the settings for the users let's go back to the settings for gmail